All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, we got the one and only, man. We got an up-and-coming rising star within the hip-hop community, man. We got the ever-so-talented TG Music right here, right now, live on the line. How are you doing this evening? I'm awesome, man. How are you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing best I can possibly be down here in Canada, man. Just uh, enjoying my Thursday night, chopping it up with hip-hop's best, man. I hope everything is all well, all well on your end as well. Yeah, it's going great here in Wisconsin, man. No complaints. Thank you. Hey, man, I gotta say, you're actually pro- you're actually probably the very first hip hop artist from Wisconsin that I actually had the opportunity to interview, man. No way. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. But I know you're a busy guy, TG. So I'm gonna dive right into this interview, man. But I gotta take you back to the beginning of your amazing career this far. And I have to ask, man, first and foremost, what originally made you decide to venture into the music industry initially, man? Because you got such a unique sound. I appreciate that. Yeah, so I started, you know, like, skateboarding and stuff, you know, when I was real, real young, and I first got my taste of good hip-hop through a skateboard video, a VHS tape way back in, I was second grade or whatever, heard Wu-Tang Clan for the first time, uh, RZA, just a Duel of the Iron Mike, the Liquid Swords album, and just hearing that sound and that style that young, it kind of just, like, opened my ears to that, that culture and that's that option for music, and then growing up, uh, discovering, like, Atmosphere, the Rhyme Series Entertainment, Brother Ali, Aesop Rock, Idea and Abilities, uh, and, like, middle school, early middle school, discovering those guys, kind of just, like, put me in, like, a moment where, like, these guys are going through or talking about similar situations that I am dealing with, but I couldn't at that time figure out how to process it and word it out, but, like, hearing that style of music, it really influenced me to like, wow, if they can reach to me, maybe I can put things in my terms and do things my way through music and hopefully reach people like they helped me out. So basically, just giving back, basically. And I got to say, man, going back to when you actually mentioned that skateboarding video, man, if, I, I do know you said you were like in second grade, so that was obviously a long time ago. But I, I, I honestly grew up watching like skateboarding videos and whatnot, and man, whatnot. I have to ask, do you remember what skateboarders it was actually featuring? Was it like an old Tony Hawk video, or was it like a Andy McDonald? Like what, what skateboarders was actually in that video? Um, it was pretty. It was a, a more independent company at the time. I believe it was Aesthetic Skateboards, and I think it was like Clyde Singleton was the skateboarder, and he had a couple scenes, and then one of the opening scenes was the Duel of the Iron Mike. And just at that point, it was like, game over. This is what I want to do. This is the kind of music I want to make. I got to say, man, you, you can't go wrong with those days, man. I remember back in the day going to a local blockbuster, man. And this, that, this same blockbuster definitely shows my age. But uh, I used to rent the old skateboarding videos, man. Just an hour of just straight shredding, man. I used to love watching those. Exactly. But also as well, man, January 11th of 2018, you actually teamed up with Mayday to actually release the collaborative single titled Then uh, Then It Hits Home. I was wondering, uh, could you tell us a bit more about that song? And of course, how did yourself and Mayday originally get connected? Um, well, Mayday, you know, they were signed with Strange Music and Tech 9 and uh, I discovered them sometime back in high school. I was a big media fan, and... Uh, they had made some posts about on social media about, you know, opening opportunities up to network with other artists, and I contacted their management, and quick email shoots, and we got back and forth, and the song came out pretty quick. Um, I had a concept idea for the title, and then it hits home, just kind of like, a, this is what you're going through, and your realization moment, and then it hits home, and I kind of just let them have the, the hook freedom, uh, I got an eight bar hook from them and they turned around with a, a 12 bar hook or an eight bar hook and then a four bar bridge for me. And they resequenced and kind of had a lot of hands on in that song. But um, I had wrote my verses after hearing what they had created with the hook. And um, that led to, you know, just great communication with them and uh, working actually with other strange music artists after that song too. So it was just kind of a, not a team collaborative, but everyone had their hands in that specific song, and then it hits home. I gotta say, man, I would really love to see yourself and Tech Nine actually get together for a song, man. I think that would be, I think that would be monumental. Yeah, I've uh, I've met him a couple times, uh, going to see him and do the VIP meet and greets and whatnot. 
I've talked to him about it. I never, of course, got any follow up. I'm sure there's a big charge with that type of feature, but um, I would be more than willing to. I mean, of course, that would be awesome. Oh man, definitely. Especially with with a Tech Nine feature, that would definitely make your stream skyrocket right to the top. It would. It would. And also as well, man, May 2nd of 2020, you actually released my personal favorite single of yours, actually titled Cinnamon Toast Grunge, man, that I gotta say was actually one of the most creative songs that I personally have ever listened to, man. I was wondering if you could actually tell our listeners the story and inspiration behind this song, man, because it, it, it was just so amazing. Right, so Cinnamon Toast Grunge with a G. Um, I was drinking one night, and I was eating dry cereal, just, it was a crazy crazy drunken night and uh i slurred i was on the, i was talking to people i'm gonna get some cinnamon toast grunge and just slurred it out saying cinnamon toast crunch and that kind of just evolved into just a joke basically and that video was the first video i shot myself i do all my mixed mastering myself but that was the first music video i took on editing and doing myself my brother helps me out with that my younger brother but um, it was basically just a drunken joke that turned into, all right, well, let's let's strip this instrumental down and just go bar heavy on it, just double time the whole fucking thing. And, yeah, that one was a lot of fun. It got a pretty good response right away, and then uh, that one made the, the first album as well with uh, And Then It Hits Home. Uh, Cinnamon Toast Grunge was on there, Out in the Cold. A lot of the bigger songs when I was first really breaking through, like, album releases, EP releases. That was one of my favorites at that time. And I gotta say as well, man, definitely is a phenomenal song. I really do like also how you kind of put the album, like, the, like, like uh, sorry, the single cover together to make it look almost like a variation of the Cinnamon Toast Crunch Box. Yep, yep, that was all uh, behind the scenes, my editing. It looks kind of choppy now looking back on it, but thank you, yeah, it, it really made it pop, if you will. And also as well, man, on October 22nd of 2021, you actually released the album uh, titled Scorpio Syndrome. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a bit more about this phenomenal album. And of course, where can we actually stream ourselves a copy of it today? Uh, Scorpio Syndrome was my third album, 100% uh, solo. Uh, my first solo album, but third full album, and... Uh, Produced by Hill Brown. I've been working with him since I started. Shouts out to my producer. He's awesome and amazing. He took care of all the production on Scorpio Syndrome. And uh, basically, I'm a Scorpio and dealing with, you know, people say we're hard headed or stubborn and all the good characteristic, not flaws, but characteristics that uh, Scorpio may present or cope with in different ways um, with life. So I basically just internalized what. Scorpio, being a Scorpio was, and kind of lift it as it's a syndrome, not a sickness, but we, we deal with it as we're born into it. We're, we have to embrace that, that astrological part of ourselves. And uh, Scorpio Syndrome did really, really well. It's probably right now, before my next album comes out, right now my favorite album that's released. And it's on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, wherever you stream music, uh, TG Music. EG Music, and Scorpio Syndrome is one word. S-C-O-R-P-I-O-S-Y-N-G-D-R-O-M-E. Scorpio Syndrome. And I got to say as well, I noticed as well that you actually received a uh, iTunes plaque for that particular project as well, man. I, I have to follow up on that, man. How does it feel to actually be like, to just, you know, a, just a few years into your amazing career and you already have a plaque from iTunes hanging up in your studio? Thank you. Yeah, it was a big shocker, like a surprise. I mean, I put the album up for the pre-orders, and the fans and the, the true supporters took care of me on that one. And uh, when the album released, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the charts. I wasn't really expecting it, but um, when I saw it the next day, like, of course, it releases at 11 o'clock or midnight the day before. But it, it took a few hours for the, the charts to trigger and seeing it climb, like even it, it first started at like 179, I pulled it up on my phone and I was at my day job at the time and uh, I, I cheered up a little bit seeing it at 79 and then in the next few hours it jumps up to 62, 62. And so once it peaks there, um, Toolbox Platinum is the company out of California that handles all the RIAA certified gold, platinum, 
all the the charting, the major major artist charting awards are run through Jewel Box Platinum, and uh, they took care of me and they sent me an amazing, very very well elegantly presented plaque for the the commemoration charting placement of uh, yeah my third album. It was it was insane. And I gotta say, man, definitely congratulations on that, man, because there's artists that that, that work for like ten plus years straight. And they try their absolute hardest, but they can't even get them. They, they can't even get that far, man. But you got there in like just a couple of years, man. So definitely, congratulations and free up that wall space because more's on the way. Yeah, yeah, I have my next album coming out. I jumped it up a month early. It was supposed to be released August fifth, but going uh, July eighth on the next one. And I'm not gonna lie, the pre-orders were pretty heavy on that one too. So fingers crossed for this next album, Supernatural, coming out. In about 14, 15 days. And also as well, man, I actually noticed uh, via Instagram that on December 6th of 2021, you were supposed to open up uh, for Dizzy Wright, but unfortunately, due to COVID-19, it was postponed. For the listeners that actually, uh, for, the, for the listeners that did snag themselves a ticket for that December 6th show, I was wondering if there's any update yet on when this show is actually going to happen, man, because I think that would be a phenomenal opportunity, especially for yourself to open up for him. Yeah, actually, that show had yeah it was supposed to happen last year December, and it happened um, a few weeks back. Actually, it was at the Annex. Um, I'm trying to blank on the date, uh, March something, or I'm sorry, uh, May May twenty first, I think it was. Yeah, May twenty first, and uh, yeah, Dizzy Wright, Demerick, and DJ Hoppe were on tour with uh, Toxic as well, and uh, yeah, I, I rocked the shit out of that show. I actually have a full that recording on my YouTube channel of my opening performance with uh, for that night. But, um, yeah, it went perfectly, absolutely perfect. Got to meet all the guys. And uh, Emrick, who was also on tour, is also featured on my next coming up album, Supernatural. So it was cool to chop it up with him. I gave him a copy. And, uh, yeah, it was an excellent show. And also as well, I actually saw that you actually have your own merchandise line available. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners what different products you currently have. And of course, where can we actually per- snag ourselves some TG Music uh, merch today? The official uh, TG Music merch is run through my... Uh, my uh, I'm partnered with a company, Husky Graphics. That's H-U-S-K-Y-G-R-A-F-I-X, Husky Graphics. Uh, huskygraphics.com they uh, take care of all of my logo designs um, merch designs we've got uh, t-shirts we've got uh, currently uh, beer glasses we've got ashtrays rolling trays um, stickers digital downloads um, huskygraphics.com they are fantastic they also do take orders for anybody who is listening that needs merch orders small batches Anything really, they can help you out. They're one hundred percent perfect quality, ship timely, one hundred percent professional. I can't be more pleased with them. And I gotta say as well, man, I was actually looking at your TG Music bar cup, man. I gotta say, I would definitely gonna snag myself a few, snag myself a few of those, man. Canada Day is coming up, so I definitely need something to do some shots out of. Nice, yeah. Those uh, sixteen ounce pint glass, or yeah, sixteen ounce pint glasses. They're uh thermal color changing so similar to like Coors Mountain they turn blue when they're cold the logo or the lettering will change color when it gets cold we also we're getting uh, coffee cups that do the hot thermal change too got a lot of a lot of cool stuff coming up soon and also as well man on April 22nd of 2022 you actually teamed up with uh, Dachshund Ob- Obscure uh, the Real Taco Kid Vibe and others to actually release the collaborative single titled uh, Madison Cypher 2022. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a story behind this. And of course, how did you all you guys get connected and, and of course meet and get connected and put together this phenomenal cypher? Oh, that cypher was a lot of fun. Um, teaming up with, the, they're all Madison or Wisconsin artists and um, Kid Vibe, that's uh, technically his release, his song. So he's kind of the glue for that whole situation. He knows all, he's a promoter as well. So he kind of brought in who he thought would mesh well. First coming to me, like, with the idea, we need a Madison Cypher. He had a list of MCs that he wanted to bring on. And um, 
Phil Brown, my producer, supplied the beat for that one. Shout out to him for that. I mixed and mastered all the audio and did the video as well. Um, we gathered downtown Madison. It was uh, Saturday morning, maybe maybe afternoon, but it was right before spring really took off, and it was freezing, absolutely freezing, windy, maybe thirty miles an hour, twenty negative ten. It was it was fucking cold. We did a couple takes really 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 quick. Everyone's hands are red and freezing. If you zoom in and pause it, you'll see how red my hands are because I was filming the whole time. And then for my part, we had a stand-in helping me film. But uh, it was just a perfect experience. Every artist, we've done shows together. Shout out to everybody on there. They're all excellent artists. You should definitely check them out. Um, the Cypher video, I think it's got over five, 6,000 views on it. did really, really well. And uh, shout out to Kid Vibe for holding that one down. That was really really good for the madison team and i have to ask man because obviously i know at the end at the end of the song name you guys have 2022 is this something you guys plan on doing every single year or is this kind of just a one-time thing this this entire madison get together um there was talk of follow-up different cyphers new artists and maybe like a, a showcase uh channel series something along the lines further down the line but um as of right now it's going to be the one and only and also as well, I do know that, that throughout the interview you brought up a, a brand new album that you're actually going to be dropping. And I noticed via Instagram that you actually announced that it's going to be dropping August 5th of 2022, which is going to be a 19-track album titled, of course, Supernatural. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a bit more about this up-and-coming album. And of course, what can we expect from it when it does drop later this summer? All right. So yeah, the Supernatural album uh, originally was scheduled for August 5th, but... um. I'm getting a little impatient. It's one of, like, it's it really means a lot to me. This album, it, it shows a lot of emotion, a lot of diversity in the, uh, the lyrical structure, the instrumental styles and sounds. There's trap, there's boom bap. There's some songs I wouldn't even consider to be hip-hop, if you will. So it's kind of, if you were to take my last four or five projects and roll them all up into one, that's kind of what this grand 19-track album is kind of representing. Like, uh, if you're familiar with the movie Pineapple Express, and he's explaining what Pineapple Express is, oh, if this one weed met this other weed, and they had a baby, and then these two weeds, and they all got together and fucked, and then this would be the final product. It's kind of similar to that with all my last, my last four projects wrapped up into one. So it's kind of supernatural i'm feeling more confident more skillful more natural in my ability to produce music and create and write and i'm, I'm feeling pretty confident with that so the play on words of supernatural is like I'm, I'm in my zone i'm in my element and then the themes throughout the album touch into time travel goats ouija board that kind of double double wordplay so it's kind of it's it's a wild album i really don't know how much or how to explain it, but there's a few tracks out so far. Um, I think five of them, five singles of the 19 are out now. And I got to say as well, I checked out a few of those singles, man. They're absolutely phenomenal. I cannot wait for me personally as a fan of yourself just to hear the finished pro project when it does drop to the general public, man. Nine, me personally, I'm an album guy. I don't mind singles, but I love just being able to sit down, listen to a full-length album, and just digest it all, man. So I'm definitely super excited. Yeah, so that one I rescheduled for um, July 8th. So I jumped it up uh, about three and a half, four weeks, so coming sooner than we think, and I'm excited for it. I've been getting a lot of good responses. I've sent a couple of the uh, the master files to people involved with the project. Um, there's four producers on this one. The main producers always will be Hill Brown. Um, he's family to me, and then we've got Tommy Vamos, Sino Good, and Alex Gordon. They each have one song. So it's, it's a lot of different style of productions. Um, there's a reggae song on there. There's a heavy trap song. There's, of course, hardcore MC boom bap style. It, it's all over the place, but in a good way. But I have to ask, man, other than this uh, nine, phenomenal 19-track album coming out, uh, not this sorry in July. I have to ask, man, what is next for yourself, TG Music, man? Is there anything we happen to miss during tonight's broadcast? Anything else you do still want to talk about or promote? What well, we still got you here live on the Canadian FM dial this evening? 
Um, you know, I've started working on the fifth album already. So uh, I've got two tracks written, and I'm kind of just going over the memorization of the words. I'll get a couple of rough recordings in the next month. But um, I think I'm going to be doing a monthly, after, after the release of uh, Supernatural, let that ride out, keep promoting that. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, some live music videos touching from that album, which will also be converted into a live sampler album of Supernatural. So the 19-track studio recorded album, and then in a few months I'll do these live YouTube videos where I'll perform three or four songs, and that'll be episode one, and I'll pick random songs from the album. So you'll get a live take to see me how I do it live, plus the studio recording. So there's basically two albums coming out for reference of Supernatural and then working on the fifth studio album. Don't have the name yet, but it's, it's some pretty gritty, hardcore boom bap stuff so far. So I'm excited. And also, TG, this is the time of the interview quickly that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give, like, shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. But most of all, man, your social media handles. That way our listeners that are listening can actually uh, chime in and stay updated with everything TG Music if they're not already doing so. Yeah, definitely. Um, TG Music is pretty straightforward across all social medias. Um, Instagram is TG underscore music underscore uh, TG on Facebook or TG Music with um, the letter I replaced with the number one. That's how you can find me on Facebook. Um, other than streaming platforms, TG Music, um, YouTube is TG Music Official. Uh, shout outs, uh, there's a lot. Family, mom and dad, um, Pop, Bill Brown, my producer, my everyone who supports me. And uh, this last album had quite a bit of a uh, few features on there. There's too many in the name, but they know who they are. And they're really helping me out, get the name out, and really just keep pushing what I'm doing for for hip hop in Madison. And everyone, thank you so much for you know supporting and the Scorpio Syndrome album charting, and hopefully this next one charting. It's all it's all due to the fans, and I thank them all. Thank you. And I gotta say, first and foremost, TG, thank you so much, man, for just giving us a bit of your time here this evening and sliding into the 97.7 FM radio dial, man. It definitely was an honor to be able to chop it up with with Wisconsin's finest tonight, and hopefully down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. It's been an honor, man. I really thank you for the opportunity, you know, to talk about what I've been doing and showing your interest, and I don't even know how you discovered me or found me, but that is just awesome. Thank you so much. I would love to do another interview further down the road. Hey, man, you are most certainly welcome, and honestly, man, my ear is always to the internet, man. I know uh, back in the day, my ear was to the streets, but now it's on, now my ear is on the internet, man. If I come across something dope, I'll definitely look into it further, man, and I'm glad we actually crossed paths, man, because you definitely are on my radar, man, and you are a phenomenal artist, man. So you keep making them, and we here in Canada, we're going to keep spinning them. Thank you, DJ Immortal. That's been awesome talking to you, man. I, I truly appreciate it. Hey, man, you are most certainly welcome, man. Definitely have yourself a wonderful night, and I know it's Thursday, but definitely have yourself a wonderful weekend as well. Hey, you too, man. Stay safe.